Okay, so imagine the following situation. We can invest money at a 3% annual interest rate, and we will be investing $40 at the end of each month for three consecutive years. So as always, let's visualize these investments on a simple timeline. As we're investing at the end of each month, the markers will not be in years, but in months. So at the end of the first month, we invest $40. At the end of the second month, we invest $40 again, and so forth. And the key markers will be every multiple of 12 up to 36. So at the end of year one, after 12 months, we still invest $40. After two years, we are up to 24 months, still investing $40 at the end of each month. And we will be concluding after three years, therefore after 36 months, by a final investment of $40. If we just go back here by two months, so we'll include month 35 and month 34, and you will see why quite shortly. Just as in the previous example, we will be asking for the final value of those investments and also the present value. The only problem, and here's where we have to be careful, the interest rate, 3%, is given as an annual interest rate. So if you move money over a period of one year, it has grown by 3%. But we will not be moving money over periods of not one year, but of one month. So we have to figure out how does a 3% annual interest rate translate over a single month. Well. If you think about it, over one year, the money will grow by 3%. Well, since there are 12 months per year, over a given month, the money will not grow by 3%, but by 3% divided by 12 months, which will give you, well, if you think about this, 3 over 12 is a quarter, so you'll have a quarter of a percent, which is quite simply 0 0.0025. So this is now the growth rate per a period of one month. So be very careful when the interest rate is given over a time interval that is different from the one at which you're making your investments. So now we're good to go. If we move money forward in time over a period of one month, it will grow by a quarter of a percent. So let's now find the final value of those investments. Well, let's begin here. So $40 at this point is worth $40. Plus, this one is brought forward by one year, so it'll be 40 times 1 plus the interest rate over one month, 0, 0, 0,025, plus this payment brought forward by two years, therefore multiplied twice by 1.0025, so 1.0025 squared, plus, and we keep moving forward all of these payments of $40 up to the end of the third year, therefore the end of the 36th month, and now up to the initial payment of $40, the question is, what is the power of 1.0025? So by how many months will this payment of $40, this investment of $40, be brought forward? Well, think about it quite simply as, what do you add to 1 to obtain 36. You have to add 35. So this payment of $40, this investment, must be brought forward in time by 35 months. So to be multiplied by 1.0025, 1 
35 times. And once again, all we have now is that the final value of these investments, therefore at the end of the third year, is a simple geometric series. So let's write it concisely as such, and then use the summation formula. Well, we are summing terms of the form 40 times some power of 1.0025. As this term is 1 here, n must be 0. And n goes all the way up to 35. Notice that the number of terms is 35 minus 0 plus 1, therefore 36. But we already knew that. As over 3 years, there are 36 months. Therefore, 36 payments of $40 over 3 years. So now, once again, we have a geometric series, a finite geometric series, and R is 1.0025. We can evaluate quite efficiently with the summation formula, which is, if you recall, the first term times 1 minus R to the number of terms being summed over 1 minus r. The first term when n is 0 returns quite simply 40. 1 minus r raised to the number of terms, as we have said, 35 minus 0 plus 1 is 36. There are 36 terms in our summation over 1 minus r. And if you evaluate this with your calculator, you will obtain approximately 1,504 dollars and 82 cents. So we now have the final value of our 36 investments of 40 dollars at the end of each month, therefore after three years. Well, as in the previous example, the previous video, we can find the present value directly from the final value. We simply have to bring back the final value, the value of the investments after 36 months, back to month zero. Well, so how many months do we have to bring this final value back? Well, 36 minus what is zero? 36. So we have to divide not multiply, as we are moving backward in time, the final value by 1.0025, times, therefore, to 36. And if you evaluate this, again with the previously found value for the final value and your calculator, you will obtain approximately a thousand dollars, three hundred and seventy-five and forty-six cents. Of course, we can find the present value independently of the final value using the same idea we used for the final value. Well, we want to bring those 36 investments of $40 back to time zero. So we have to bring this one back one month. So as we're moving backward in time, we have to divide by 1.0025. The second investment of $40 must be brought back not by one, but by two months. So it's divided twice by 1.0025. So its present value is, of course, 40 over 1.0025 squared, all the way up to the final payment investment of $40. And this investment must be brought back to zero, therefore brought back backward by 36 months. So it is divided 36 times by 1.0025, so it is over 1.0025 to the 36. And once again, we should recognize this as a simple geometric series.
I will separate the $40 from the 1 over 1.0025. And the first term begins when n is 1 and goes all the way up to 36. And once again, we have 36 terms. 36 minus 1 plus 1 is 36. And whereas before, r was 1.0025 because we moved forward in time, now as we move backward in time, r will be, as expected, 1 over 1.0025. As we have a finite geometric series, we can evaluate it using the summation formula. The first term, 1 minus r to the number of terms over 1 minus r. You can plug in the first term when n is 1 gives us 400 over 1.0025 times 1 minus r to the number of terms to the 36 over 1 minus r. And of course if you evaluate this with your calculator, you will obtain as before $1,375.46. And that's it. Notice that this is essentially the exact same situation as we found ourselves in the previous video, the only twist was with the interest rate. We were given an annual interest rate, but we had to move forward and backward in time investments over time intervals of not one year, but of one month. As there were 12 months in a year, well there still are, we have to divide the annual interest rate, which is for the whole year, by 12 as there are 12 months in a year. Think of it quite simply as if 3% is for the whole year, well for a twelfth of it, it must be a twelfth of 3%, therefore 0 0.0025. And from that point on, everything was done exactly as we did in the previous example. And that's it.